Hey guys, Billy, Archangel Art Studio. And uh, as you can tell by the title today, I'm not doing a pour. I wanted to do something that was, uh, that a lot of people have been asking me to do and something that I think is very important. I'm going to touch on uh, the 10 worst mistakes that resin artists make. And not all of them are beginner mistakes. A lot of us uh, still make these mistakes <laughs> constantly, more often than we'd like to admit. But anyway, Hopefully this is going to help some folks out. And uh, if you're if you're new to my channel and this is a, your first time watching, thank you and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notified when any of the new videos come out. And you're going to want to do that. I'm going to be doing a lot more content videos on how to and products and stuff like that. Things that are just going to help you out along the way, whether you're a beginner or not. You know, I try to if I find something that's good, I try to pass it along to everybody, you know, and I think that's important as an art community that we help each other. Anyway, with that being said, these 10 things are in no specific order except number 10. Except number 10, I believe, is the the most important thing, and we're going to get to that. And like I said, 1 through 9, random order, but they're all of equal importance. Um, number 1, product. I, I think that you... Uh, you got to have a good product. You know, I understand if you're just starting out, money is an important thing. So you don't want to dump a ton of money uh, if you're just starting out. A lot of people don't have the money to go and buy a hundred and sixty dollar gallon of resin or whatever the, you know, I just set a random price. I'm not trying to hit specifically on anything. So. There's ways to cut corners without cutting quality. There's resins out there that are good resins that aren't going to break your budget. And there's a lot of videos on those, so I'm not going to really touch on those. I'm not trying to sell products here. Um, I'm trying to help people with mistakes that are made. So uh, make sure that you get a good product. You know, when I first started out, price was a big thing. And... I bought cheap stuff and it frustrated me because it didn't work as good as the higher end products. You know, your resin, you know, you get, you just want to make sure that you get a quality resin, quality paints, micas, whatever it is you decide you're going to use. You don't have to have the very best of the best, but don't buy the worst of the worst. Don't buy the cheapest just because it's cheap, because then you're not going to have fun. It's, it's going to take away from your experience. You're going to turn out a bad product, not because you're a bad artist, but because you're using an inferior product. So with that being said, that was number one. Number two, know your product. You know, whatever you're going to be using, make sure you know it. You know, whatever resin you think you're going to buy, Check it out before you buy it. There's ton We live in the information age. Everything is accessible to you. Pick up your smartphone. Google it. It's out there. Get on YouTube. Put the name of the product in there. Somebody's probably already done a test on it. You know, and I, I found, like, you go on Amazon. If they sell the product on Amazon, go on Amazon. And there's comments and reviews and read them. You know, why did this person give this product a one-star review? Was it because of shipping time or was the product actually inferior? Read the comment. Don't just go because there's one star because there's people that, uh, frankly, nothing's going to please them. It don't matter what it is. They're just one star, one star, one star, one star. doesn't matter what it is. So read the review and you're going to know why that product is getting the reviews that it is, the stars that it is. And uh, an another... Another big mistake, and um, this doesn't so much happen with people that's been doing this for a while, but beginners, your mix ratio with your resin and your paints and your micas, make sure that you stay on top of that. When it says one-to-one, -one, that means one-to-one. -one. Don't think that you're going to add more hardener because you want it to harden real hard and you don't want it to scratch and more hardener is going to make it better. Uh-uh. That's not going to do it. You're going to start... Uh, your resin has what's called a pot life. When you put it and mix it in your container, you've started the countdown. You've got to use it. You've got a certain amount of time. Different resins have different pot lives. 
you know, uh, the particular resin I use, Pro Glass, 45 minutes plus. And this depends on a lot of variables, you know, the, the temperature in your studio. Lots of people say warm your resin up before you use it. It'll make it easy to use. That's agreeable. I understand that. But you've started a thermal cycle in the resin. When you get it too hot and you mix it, the resin thinks it's ready to kick off. And it'll start, it'll start hardening and drying in your bucket, your pot, your container, whatever, a lot sooner than what it's supposed to because you've heated it up to a point to where the resin now thinks that it's further along than what it is. You've started it drying and curing. So be aware of your temperature, um, everything. Um, that's number three. Number four is, I believe, have a plan. You know, and I'm very guilty of not having a plan. <laughs> I'll come down to my studio and say, I'm going to do a pour. And then I'll start thinking about what I want to do. And I understand most of us do this. A lot of us do this. But... If you're just starting out to keep yourself from getting frustrated, go down to your studio or in your garage or wherever you're mixing uh, and have a plan of attack. You know, am I going to do a dirty pour? Prep for it. You know, am I going to do a flip cup? Am I, you know, what am I going to do? And within that plan, now set up for that. And that goes to uh, number five, which is your prep. You know, prep makes your pour go easier. If you're using a wooden board, make sure you do a good prep on it. Raw wood, a lot of people go down to Home Depot and Lowe's and buy the rounds or have them cut, you know, wood for their boards. You know, they're trying to save money and I get that. But you have to make sure you prep that surface good because you're going to get these micro bubbles that constantly come up from a spot that you didn't prep good enough real wood raw wood breathes and that resin it will just constantly create bubbles and when it cures you're going to have a little bubble geyser in the face of your piece and it's going to ruin it you're not going to like it you can get rid of it you can sand it if you're good you can you know people won't even notice where it was but that takes time and practice so to avoid having to do that just put a little bit more time into prep work you know if you're going to use gesso for your boards kills acrylic paint whatever you're going to do i recommend a couple coats sanding in, sanding in between each coat that way you know you're taking off high spots low spots whatever just a good smooth surface Resin likes a smooth, flat surface, you know. Roll your edges, that way it doesn't dam up on it. It just kind of flows over. You're going to like the look you get. And even on the bottom edge, a lot of people don't think about this, if it's a straight, flat lip, the resin will start to go down. Yes, it will drip, but you'll get this little dam down there. So I take on my boards, and I even roll those a little bit so it kind of rolls under. You get your drips, you can wipe them off with your finger, but it's a smooth transition all the way around. All right, and another mistake that I see people make, and these mistakes ain't always in your artwork. These mistakes are just for art resin, uh, resin artists. <laughs> Dyslexia kicked in. Buying in bulk consumables like cups, sticks, gloves. These things you're going to use a ton of. So go on Amazon, go to Sam's Club, and invest the first time and buy a case of these things. Whatever it is you think you're going to use the most of, buy them in bulk. You get them for cheaper, and you're going to use them, so just get them. And with that being said, number seven is there's things that you can buy that are reusable. You know, I buy silicone wherever I can. Silicone stir sticks. If you go in like Hobby Lobby in the cake department... They've got these silicone spatulas for cake. They work great in resin for stir sticks. And they're silicone, so when the resin dries, you just peel it right off, and you keep using the same thing over and over and over again, and it saves you money. Eventually, yeah, they wear out. They tear. Resin's hard on things, and you keep peeling it off of it, keep peeling it off. It gets worn, and it tears. But the price of them are cheap enough to where... And they last long enough, you get your money worth, your money's worth out of them. 
Alright, and number eight, this is something that I am guilty of to this day, and I have troubles and I try to force myself to stop doing this, and that's overworking a piece. Resin, resin will keep changing when you pour it on there. If you if you take a board, put black down, and just put a drop of color in the middle, watch it, it's gonna spread. Resin levels and spreads. It's it's gonna it's gonna keep moving. So when you first do your piece, don't look at it and go, oh I hate that. Because it's gonna change. Slowly it'll change. You know, if you think you need some more color down here, okay, add some more color. But I have the habit of I'll do a piece and right away I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh, I don't like that, so let's take a stick and go through it. Or now let's pour all my colors and do a dirty pour over it. Or let's do this. You can overwork a piece so quickly that it just turns into a muddy mess. And at that point, there's really no saving it without letting it dry and going over the top of it. You know, that's, that's, about, that's about what you do with an overworked piece. And I've got lots of boards that... I go over the top of because I don't like them because I've overworked them. N number nine, I believe, is very important. Um, attitude. Why did you get into resin art? Why are you doing art? Because you enjoy it. Don't let frustration take the enjoyment out of what you do. You know, if if you're using inferior products and you're fighting your resin, your fighting, your products, it takes the enjoyment out of what you're doing. So you don't want to let that happen. So I suggest, you know, get yourself good products. Get yourself stuff that you're comfortable working with. Know your products. Know your tools. You know, your hair dryer. Something stupid as your hair dryer. Know how hard it blows on high, how hard it blows on low. Your heat gun, how hot it gets, how close you can get to it without scorching your resin. Different resins have different heat temps. You know, you can hold a heat gun on certain resins right there and move it around. It's not, it's gonna be fine. Others, you just hold it there for a second and you've scorched it. So this is why it's very important to know your product and learn what you're using. That way you stay away from these mistakes. And number 10, this is the most important piece of advice and that I can pass along and that's just don't give up. You're not going to turn out the Mona Lisa the first piece you do. And you may. I mean, it could happen. But I'm just saying, don't give up. Not everybody's going to like your work. You're going to get rude comments. You're going to get people that think they're the greatest artist on two legs. And they're going to tell you, what do you think you're doing? That's horrible. Your technique is all wrong. You're doing this. You're doing that. You're doing this. Well, somebody at some point created the technique that they're using. They're not the inventors of it. S everything we're doing, somebody else has done. Somebody else has done right. Somebody else has done wrong. But somebody came up with it at some point in time. So who's to say that you're not an innovator and a creator and you're coming up with something that years down the road, everybody else is going to be using and they're going to be saying, oh, you got to use this technique. I'm just saying, you know, don't, don't get frustrated and give up because you may be giving up on something that you're really going to enjoy and you're going to be really good at. And uh, with that being said, you know, let me, let me just hit the top 10 again. You know, number one is a good product. Make sure that you're using a good product. You know, number two is know your product. Research it. Whatever you're going to buy, give yourself a budget. Within that budget, list out your products and research them and get the best product within your budget. Number three is your mixing ratios. Make sure that you mix properly. And, and that goes for your micas and your paints. You know, you can take paint and put too much in your resin cup. Don't think that I want a deep orange, so I'm going to add this whole bottle of orange paint to my, you know, this much resin, and it's going to be the most beautiful orange. No, you're going to make gum. You're going to make caulking. It's never going to dry. It's going to be a muddy mess. It's just going to be horrible. So learn your mixing ratios. Uh, number four is a plan. Have a plan of attack. When you go down there, go down there with an idea of what you want to do, what you want to create. It's just going to help you stay focused and help your pour go a little bit smoother, I believe. Um, number five is prep. You know, prep your area. Make sure that everything's accessible to you, that you don't have to go hunting for something that you might use during your pour. 
because like I said, your resin has a cure time and everything you do is eating into that cure time, into that pour time. So you wanna make sure that you utilize the most amount of time while that resin's in the perfect state for using. So make sure that you're, you're, you're prepped, your work area is prepped, you got all your stuff accessible. Um, and that's number five. Number six, it, where you can buy in bulk, you know, because it's gonna save you money, you know. It, you're not gonna you're not gonna spend a hundred dollars on stir sticks when you buy a big case of them uh, and where you can number number seven buy reusable silicone is your best friend when it comes to resin you can get this is a silicone this is a silicone mat down here that's on my table you know all I do is peel it up when it's done my runoff and it's good as new. Uh, number eight, don't overwork your piece. I, I'm guilty of this. I see a lot of resin artists today that, you know, are seasoned artists that do this. It doesn't take a lot of time to make a good piece. And this is where a lot of people get it in their mind is, I've really got to do this long, lengthy process to create this beautiful piece. Let the resin do what it's going to do. A lot of times, if you just let it sit for a minute, It'll start developing some cells. It'll start lacing up for you. Learn what products promote that. There's a lot of products out there, you know, everybody's wanting cells and lacing. There's products out there that do this on their own that you don't have to do nothing but pour it on. You know, Lorez Angel White. Love it. Casting Craft, Opaque White, Opaque Black. You know, these products promote cells and lacing. And all you do, mix it with the resin. Pour it on your piece. Watch it do its magic. Uh, number nine I talked about was your attitude. You know, keep a good attitude. <laughs> if you're happy with what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you turn out a bad piece. You're still enjoying it, and you're still going to be happy, and that's important. And number ten, like I said, is the most important, I feel, is don't give up. It doesn't matter if you make one good piece out of five, ten whatever you're gonna learn it you're gonna remember how you made that good piece and it's repeatable you know the effects are repeatable what you're going after is repeatable just remember what you did what you used and keep doing it you know and like i said unless you're doing art for a living make sure that you're enjoying it you know make sure that the pieces that you do are the pieces that you like and uh um, uh, again, I can't really think of anything else. I mean, I can, but I don't want to. I just wanted to hit on the top 10 things that questions that I get asked a lot, and I wanted to put out a video about that. And again, I've I've had a lot of comments about tutorials and stuff like that. So you're gonna see a lot more of that on my channel, and I'm gonna be doing a lot of helpful tutorials, uh, product reviews, which is something that we haven't done a lot of. There's a lot of new products out there, and I'll test them for you guys. I'm going to be buying a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily made for resin art, but can be incorporated into it and make your life easier. So we're going to be doing a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good times, and we're going to be doing a lot more fun stuff on my channel. You know, a lot more giveaways that's going to benefit you guys. So, like I said, if you are a subscriber, we appreciate you. If you're not a subscriber, if this is your first time watching this video, thank you and subscribe now. Hit that bell, that way you're notifi notified when the next video comes out. Tongue tied, can't talk. And uh, yeah, and everything that I talk about is always in the description. You can go to the description, click on it, go shopping. We are an Amazon affiliate, so if it's on Amazon, you click on it, it's gonna take you right to that site and you can just go shopping. It saves you guys time. And um, I really uh, don't know what else to add. So with that, I'm going to end. So you guys keep doing what you do. I'm going to keep doing what I do. And as always, see ya.